want, I think I said, like a, a reform. Say for we took away government as being ultimate authorities right. over England, over right. England, and we changed that for something else. Well, the, go the government isn't actually the ultimate authority over England. The monarch is the ultimate authority. This is the whole problem that I think politicians miss out on. You know, yes. they're so busy trying to sneak in by the back door and, and, and make this place a republic so that one of them can be the president that they're missing the point that they are only there under the sufferings of Her Majesty the Queen. They are Her Majesty's government and Her Majesty's opposition and the monarch is the ultimate power of the United Kingdom. The monarch has the power to make or change the law. So you're saying, you're saying that Queen so has the power now to overthrow government? Yes, the Queen could, the queen could uh, shut the government down tonight and she invite somebody, power. the Queen could invite somebody else to form a government. Hmm? That's all she'd need to do. she need to say, we need a change of government and I invite so-and-so to form a government. And then the uh, Prime Minister would have to go and, uh, you know, hand in his, uh, his letters uh, of, of warrant. Yeah. And uh, then the new Prime Minister would go and kiss hands with the Queen. Yeah. And that would be it done, sorted. Yeah. But we don't yeah. do it that way because we also include the people in it and we therefore have a general election. Yeah. So they need to call a general election if you wanted a change of government, and the people could then, at the ballot box, yeah. decide, right? Yeah. But, I mean, that's what we do in a democracy. But then, once the people had decided, the, the queen, uh, the monarch, would have the ultimate say and say, right, well, it looks like the nation want this person, so I will invite them to form a government. Yeah, doesn't it annoy you a bit, Scotty, that? Doesn't it annoy you that the Queen doesn't do more? That she doesn't do more to change things? Well, she does. I mean, the Queen, nothing can become an act of Parliament. You can put as many bills through as you like, and both houses can vote on them, right? Yeah. But nothing can become an act of Parliament until it has what is known as the Royal Assent, A-S-S-E-N-T. And yeah. that is the Queen's signature on the bill, which then makes it an act of Parliament. So yeah. nothing can go through without the Queen's say-so. Yeah. You know, and we need to make sure, we need to really remind uh, Parliament of the power of the monarch because prior to constitutional monarchy, which is what we have now, in other words, we are ruled by a constitution which is carried out by Her Majesty's government and Her Majesty's op opposition. Prior to that, yeah. we had a absolute monarchy in which the power of the monarch was absolute and did not include the say of the people or of parliament. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can, can you see? So in actual fact, when the king said, I want this done, then that was what happened right yeah. away. Yeah, I'll I, I tell you something though, Scotty, something which I, which I would uh, love, love to see. I'd love to see people who've got the real courage like to really set up, you know, like what he did, Oliver Cromwell, and people really want to set up a brand new set of situations. No, no, Peter, Oliver Cromwell was an absolute disaster, right? We actually put a monarch to death. We divided <laughs> Charles the First into a head and a body. And the people that put him to death were so cowardly, they couldn't bring themselves to do it at the time. And they did it, I think, at two o'clock in the afternoon. I think it was a Saturday afternoon. And yeah. that was where the famous phrase came in, he nothing commended or mean upon that memorable scene. And uh, he, uh, he, he wore an extra shirt so that uh, he didn't want people to see him shiver with the cold in case they thought he was frightened. And they, 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 they hanged him for no reason. They hanged yeah. Charles the First. They then had this Cromwell who did immense damage to the fabric of this country and then once they'd spent that force and realised that republicanism, what was known as the Commonwealth at the time, did not work, they then had a restoration yeah. with Charles the Second, Charles yeah. the First's son. Yeah. 
Do you see? Do you see? The House of Stuart were put back on the throne, and the House of Stuart remained on the throne until 1714, when Queen Anne died. And this country is a monarchy. Yeah. And all this, you know, you know, you, you, you. I, I, I love your ideas and everything, but you're very, very poorly informed when it comes to the actual practicalities. That's the way we like it because that is the fairest source of government and administration that any country has in the world. Yeah. But and every know, other country yeah. in the world is intensely and immensely jealous of Great Britain. Yeah. I think through history, Scott, it has never, ever been uh, any situation where there's been absolute fairness for each and all. And that's what we're all human beings that it's got to take. You know, it's not, it's not a lot to ask Yeah, but for. there's as much fairness, there's as much fairness as in this country through, by, by having the monarchy and by having constitutional government than you'll ever get in any other nation. Now, we've tried presidents and dictators and all sorts. We've seen them. They've come to nothing. They've gone to dust. Yeah. Right? And in actual fact, what's happening in Europe now was the blueprint drawn up by a gentleman called Adolf Hitler. Yeah. yeah. You see? And that's what's about to happen was what Hitler actually wanted. A united Germany within a united Europe. Yeah. So that's coming to fruition, and we must not surrender our sovereignty, and we must not change our way of government. Yeah. Well, I think I think it is a good thing. I can see one perspective about it, Scott. It's a good thing because it shows. The well, thing I like about royalty is that it shows the uh, dignity of England. It, I, yes. it emphasizes the dignity of England. These people are figureheads, okay. and whatever you think of the yeah. actual incumbents, although the Queen is a wonderful incumbent for her office, you yeah. must respect the office, because that's what we work on, just what you've asked for, mutual respect. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I can see that dignity. It's like, a, like a, I, think, I think like another perspective on it, Scott, from my view, is that it's idealism of what England what we can all aspire to, what royalty is, is uh, you know, sh showing, you know. What yes, but you can't aspire to that when you've got political chicanery going on yeah. behind closed doors and sovereignty being passed away to Brussels. Yeah. You know, the power in this country has to stay with the monarch. It's Definitely. the monarch that um, yeah. prime ministers come and go. Right, yeah. we've had we've had one queen since 1953, 50 years. We've had how many prime ministers? Oh, I mean, oh, can we can we yeah. work it out with Churchill, with oh. Eden, with uh, uh, who was after Eden? Macmillan, no, uh, Hume, funny, funny. Hume. Uh, who was after Hume? Wilson, right? Yeah. Who was after Wilson? Uh, Heath Callahan. Uh, yeah. No, sorry, Callahan Heath. Five, six, seven. Who was our Thatcher? Eight. Uh, John Major, nine. Um, uh, Tony Blair, ten. We've had ten prime ministers and one monarch. Does that not tell you something about which office is more important? Certainly, certainly. I, I think, I think, uh, I think, me, Scotty, I think, you know what I would love to see? I'd love to see something else uh, which coincides with royalty, right, which uh, brings uh, a more balanced perspective on, on uh, the old, you know, the old, uh, the old, you know, spectrum of England. You know what I mean? Something but but more, we've got, well, Peter, got Peter, barriers, Peter, eliminate, eliminates barriers. Peter, Peter, we've got a very, very balanced perspective. But it's things what cause barriers. Then no, there are no the barriers. Thing. I don't know where you're getting this barriers from. Yeah, but like you said, we cannot aspire. Nobody in this country can aspire to the greatest potential because, you know, government, uh, like, we've got New Labour now making all uh, intercepting situations and, like, trying to throw us into European market and all that. And it's getting worse. And, um, you know... Uh, do you, do you know what I mean, Scotty? Well, I think what we're doing, I mean, we're becoming a substandard nation in a terms of productivity, in terms of output. We're no longer the workshop of the world, and we need to get back into that position. 
We need to, yeah. we need to, you know, by by use of our labor. I mean, labor is the wealth. Yeah. The only true wealth is life, and labor is the wealth. Yeah, like I can't get over that, me Scotty. Like right, it's so rare now. I look on every product to buy nowadays because I, I see it's so rare that the Made in England stamp. And uh, like yeah, but maybe, listen, we're not building any ships. We're an island nation. Yeah. We're not, uh, you, you know, we're not the leaders in the aircraft market. We do, We have uh, virtually no British car companies left. We're not building automobiles. We're not building cars. We're not building railway engines. Yeah. We're not. Uh, we're not digging coal out of our ground. We're not smelting our own iron and steel. Yeah. You see, all that's being reduced. We're not fishing our own seas with our big, powerful fishing fleets, what, what, bringing what, 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 in our what, own fish. So you what? see, we've we've surrendered all this by political chicanery since the end of the Second World War. Yeah, and and you know we need to stop it now and reverse the process. Yeah, I think if legislation were brought in straight away, because it needs to be brought in. We're not idiots. People in England aren't idiots. We all know it's that, you know, we're, we're doing ourselves out of a good reputation, a great reputation. And we, you know, we want to bring legislation in and stop, stop all this downfall and make in, everything made, made in England uh, to a nice... Well, do you, do, you not remember the, do you not remember the Buy British campaign? Yeah, I vaguely, I vaguely remember. It's by British, yeah. everything had a Union flag on it and was stamped yeah. by British, British made. And we need yeah. to go back to that. Definitely, because we're not, we're not fools. I mean, when you I know, was young, we had British stereos in the house. Yeah, I don't know how common people have stood for it, Scotty, this decline, and nobody's really pulled together in it to, to make such demonstrations to bring real change but the answer's at the answer's at the ballot box and you know i mean yeah. it's time that somebody stood up and said you know we need to make it clear that the british power comes through the monarchy you know comes to the people through the monarchy you know yeah. that's that's what it's all about yeah i think we've got we've got to like revert back a bit to really bring uh bring us out of wilderness and you know, get a brand new... Uh, a brand new, new find, find a new direction, a proper direction. There's no point yeah. in just taking the money off all the hard-working people and chucking it into uh, the asylum seekers, into hospitals and education, uh, and the service is not actually improving. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? It's just a waste of money. In fact, you know, you can't improve something by chucking money at it. Yeah. I think, I think that kind of dignity, Scotty, I think if we got back to... Like, we had steel made in Sheffield, best steel in well made in Sheffield. Manners and, and respect. And all fine stuff, uh, you know. I think even, I think it would have an impact on how we, everybody feels, ordinary people feel. Yes. That, you know, we, we're not going to let, we're not going to let our environment go down the drain. And we make a better society, like I said, Scotty, a better, a better country. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Listen, okay, I better so dash dinky doola. Okay, so See you, Peter. Bye for now. Right, give us a call, folks, as soon as you possibly can. 0845 245 1021 is the telephone number. 0845 245 1021. You're listening to Scotty McClue, and we are live right across Yorkshire and the surrounding area. We're talking to Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Hi, Scotty. How are you, darling? You all right? Yeah, not bad. How are you? Oh, very, very much the better for hearing the love. <laughs> I, know. I, I haven't have heard from me? you. Hey, you've what, love? Have you missed me? Of course I have. Where have you been? Oh, uh, been looking after me, husband. How's, how's that man of yours? Is he all right? No, he's poorly. Oh, give him my love. He's got a nice, he's got a nasty back. A nasty back, love? Yeah, he's still... He's done something to it. Oh, love it. Give him my love. You give him a big hug from Scotty McClue. Oh, yeah. From all the good burgers of Yorkshire. Yeah, he's in bed at the moment, sir. So. Oh, bless him, bless him. How are you, love? Uh, not bad. How are you? Yes, I'm fine. I'm fine, love. Yes. What can I do for you? I'm inquiring now. You know when you're going on about them... Oh, what do you call them? What, what are you going on about? Uh, Asylum seekers, love. Yes. Yes. I think it's not fair. What's not fair? That they're coming to Hull. Oh, that they're coming to Hull? Mm. 
No, I think that uh, if they're going to behave themselves and live very much the way we do and do what they're told, then that's something. If they're going to take the mickey and start escaping and running all over the place and that, then home. Bye-bye. Mm. Game over. End of. Yeah. You know, that's what I think, love, because they're just taking the flaming mickey. Yeah, no. You know, and the government ought to stand up, pass legislation tonight and say, that's it, we no longer do asylum. We don't do asylum in the UK. Sorry, chums. <laughs> That'd be best, wouldn't it? Yeah. There you are, my darling. Listen, good to talk to you. Hi, then, Scotty. Hey, love to you both and dinky-doo. Dinky-doo to you. Dinky-doo, love. Bye-bye. Bye, then. Bye-bye Bye. now. See ya. Right, there we are. That's uh, Lynn from Hull just putting her toppings worth in there. Give us a call as soon as you possibly can. Back I go to the telephones. Who have we got here? Hello, Chris. Hello, man. Chris. Hello, Chris. Hello, Chris. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Are you all right, mate? How are you, Scotty? I'm fine. Do you want to turn your radio down? Yeah, I've turned it down. I haven't heard from you for a while now. Too long. Well, you, you know... You mustn't leave it so long, Chris. I think they should bring Maggie Thatcher back, don't you? Well, I'll tell you, she certainly... She wouldn't have put up with all this nonsense. I mean, I live in Leeds, like I told you. Of course you do. And all I see, you know, I mean, it, it, it makes me wonder sometimes what this country's going down i mean i've never voted in my life now why have you done people died to get the vote why have you never voted well to be honest with you i mean if you know if we we well i haven't voted before but like i might probably vote this time i think you must start voting because if people died to get the vote and that is proper democracy yeah you know i mean it's 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 the right to vote is a huge huge gift yeah well like i say i mean uh, where i live in that you know um we see a lot of illegal immigrants mm -hmm. in the uh well, you see there shouldn't be one single illegal immigrant in this country that is a term that we should not have the term <laughs> illegal immigrant everyone in this country we are an island mm. and every single person in this country should be here by the mandate of the rest of the people mm. well i mean um what really worries me more than anything else is the people, you know, the elderly people who have fought the war and mm. sort of like, um, you know, the elderly people that, that pay the taxes, the national insurance and all the taxes all these years and they're bringing these people in, you know, and, you know, eventually there'll be no... Well, I know myself when I get... But you see, these certain, people, these people, these people have no say now, right? The pensions have gone down the lavy pan, yeah. right? They've yeah. gone, forget that, yeah. right? And uh, you've got, there's no long-term care for the elderly. No. Nope. Right? So you can forget that. So all your war heroes and all your pensioners and all your mm. people that have made this country what it is, mm. right, are being treated very, very shabbily at mm. the moment. Mm. Very, very shabbily indeed. And mm. it's a disgrace. Well, you see, we've only got Tony Blair to blame. I mean, um, you know, he, he says he's going to sort this out. I, I don't even think he knows how many... How many um, because we've gone in this country well in I mean, fairness in fairness i don't think you can lay all the blame at, at tony blair's door i know he's the prime minister i know he's the head of the government in actual fact it needs something far bigger than just tony blair to say about this it needs serious government <coughs> action it needs legislation passed to say things like i'm sorry we don't do asylum or you step out of line come in by the way chum and go into a holding station but step out of line once and you're back on that plane yeah but the problem is exactly i mean if you know like some of them have um you know because it's turning to, this country into third world yeah but some of the asylum seekers have threatened to harm themselves if they get sent back to their own country yeah well what's the problem and it's like um i mean, I mean why why is that why is that our problem i mean i, I listen to magic a to eight through the day right you know, I mean, if I got myself out to the Middle East and said, yeah. I'm staying here or I'm going to self-harm, do you think they're going to give two about that? They won't do. But you see, we're too soft in this country. Yeah, that's the point I'm and making. The, and the thing is, exactly, we've, you know, we've let, you know, like, you know, a lot of people have, have had their own way, you know, I mean, like, you know, like the government, we've, we've let a lot of things come in. I mean, this, I mean, what the government should now. say is, I'm sorry, but we are only responsible for the welfare of British citizens. Well, I mean, they're, they're checking them now when they come in because uh, there's a lot of Africans as well that have come on. They're legal immigrants. And they're checking, 
you know, the asylum seekers and plus Africans, because they're bringing diseases into the country like HIV and various other things. Tuberculosis, all the stuff that we've tried to stamp out. You know what I mean? So you know. it's just a, it's a, it's a shame, really. You know, I mean, I, I work, you know, and I, I've got a lot of uh, good Asian friends. Sure. And they work, and they work hard. You know, and then you see... Yeah, but I'm not talking about the people who are the citizens of this country, no, I, which I includes not, African, exactly. Asians, I mean, Somalis, I mean, all the rest. I'm not... What, what employ the asylum seekers. A lot of... work in slave labour. A lot of who, did you say? A lot of the... You know, where, where I live, I see a lot of the asylum seekers and they're yeah. working in sort of like takeaways and various other places. And it's all, you know, cash in hand. The driving cars, we know, were uh, her tax, no licence. You know, and it makes you wonder what is really going off. I've, I've yeah, but you see, I think that is just disrespect. That is, I mean, we we do, we do things a certain way in this country for a certain mm. reason because mm. that's what makes Britain great. That's what makes the British people people of quality. Yeah, but we tax our cars, we insure our cars, we drive carefully. All these things. Now, if people can't abide by that, bye. See ya. See us now. Mm. You yeah, know, off to the old airport, get, get the though, get the wind sock in the right direction, and tar mm, Yeah, but things aren't going to get any better, though, are they? No, not until we do something about it. And I'll tell you, now tonight is the time to do something about it. You know what I mean? Things aren't going to get any better. End of day. Well, uh, not unless we do something about it. If we do something about it, they will no get better. No one wants to do anything about it. That, you know, no one wants to do anything about it. Well, are, well, are you I mean, telling me? Are you telling me that every listener to this program, anything up to five million people, there is not one single one wants to do anything about illegal immigrants? Well, it's, it's shocking. I mean, end of, end of day, right? Are you and I on our own with this? Are we on our Todd? Well, well, like I say, I mean, I mean, uh, it's it's a, it's a bad situation because you know, you know, they, they don't know how many's in the country. The, the government don't know how many illegal immigrants are in the Well, it'd be the easiest thing to find out. You just need to send the police round the doors and say, sorry, boys, you're not stopping anybody for speeding today. You're going looking for illegal immigrants. Get round, knock the doors, find out, get the names, the addresses, all the rest of it. Get the old tags on them. Get a chip in the neck or something so we can keep track. And away we go. What's the big problem? <laughs> I wish it was easy, that, Scotty. Well, it is. <laughs> it only needs the Home Secretary to sign it and say, the Home Secretary's in charge of the police and say, I want every constable, WPC, the whole lot, knocking doors. I want to find out who's in this country and who's not. Well, like I say, I mean, things are getting so bad. I mean... That's why we all need identity cards. That's why I'd be quite happy to be chipped in the neck. Then the police can run the the the, the gun over my chip and say, "No, that's fine. That's Scotty. Yeah, he's he's, he's gonna, British." That's what it's going to lead to, though, isn't it? Yeah, but let's get it's on with it. That, let's Scotty. get on with it, man. Yeah, but the thing is, exactly at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we've got ten of them running about Yorkshire tonight. Eh? We've got ten of them running about Yorkshire tonight. Loose. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, they, they need to go back now. Mm. That's just total, total disrespect. Mm. Well, like I say, I mean, it's shocking. We can't have it. We live in respect for each other. That's it's, how we it's, work. It's, it's the government. That's all I can put it down to more than anything else. If manufacture winning, I mean, look at all this trouble, what's been happening in the... Well, if the government over, aren't over, delivering, over the, if the, the government aren't delivering, we need a change of government. Well, I think we do. You know? I really think we do. I mean, all this trouble, what's been over in been happening over in, Mar in Iraq we sat them and saying it's not really our problem is it and we're sending our boys over there to go fight this war and they're losing their lives and it's not even our problem well now that there are no weapons of mass destruction being found I think they should bring them home actually yeah they should bring them home because That's what it's I not think. our problem mate I'm going to have to dash how are you going I, I am dinky do dinky do love you lots dinky do dinky do love <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, do now. <laughs> what a top man. Right, 0845 245 10 to 1 is the telephone number. You're listening to Scotty McClue. We're live on Magic. That is the country's top radio station. This is the massive Magic megaphone in. And we are right across Yorkshire. It's 25 minutes past 11 o'clock. 
Across Yorkshire. Across Yorkshire. This is the Scotty McClue Magic. Call the Scotty McClue Magic Megaphone in now on 0845 245 1021. This is Scotty McClue and we are live on Magic. That's the telephone number 0845 245 1021 for the country's top radio station with the country's top phone in program. The one everyone's talking about and the one everyone is listening to. Back I go to the telephones. We're talking to Mr. Agnostic. Where have you been, Agnostic? Hey, Scotty. I thought I'd be hearing. Um You've I got, should think so, about time too. Yeah, I say you've got a couple of good subjects on the uh, go to, mate. That's what I was on about last time I was talking to you. If you have some in the pipeline, they can either talk about them or not talk about them. Absolutely, of course. And, and tonight is one of the best shows you've done for, you know, I, I'm really enjoying it. You're enjoying it, thanks Agnostic. And I want to talk about Asylum Seekers. But we, we value your opinion. And as I say, I want to talk about Asylum Seekers, but... Um, Normally that Peter he normally does me heading from Sheffield, but he talked a little bit of sense tonight. And it I wasn't could... too bad. Well, he got cut off last night for talking nonsense. So, That's uh, you right, know. but uh, tonight he wants a bad light. And uh, it was all about royalty. And uh, I won't say what I am, but I often think to myself, you know, about royalty. I think, uh, would the Queen be Queen if without a quake of fate or if her relations hadn't have conquered foreign lands? You know, but I won't say what I believe. Well I, mean, well, I mean, that doesn't matter. The fact is, the Queen is Queen, and, uh, you know, that's the way we work in this country. Yeah. And all these half-baked, namsy pamsy woomsy-poomsy, you know, half, half-witted half idiots that keep going on about having a republic and rubbish like that. Yeah. I mean, we've seen what it's like when people have presidents. We've seen what it's like when they have dictators. We've seen what it's like when we get, uh, you know, prime ministers that fancy themselves as film stars. All that sort of stuff. You know, yeah. we've had it all in this country over the last, uh, you know, yeah. 500 years. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and really, you know, the most successful country in the world has been done under a monarchy, i.e. this country. Yeah. You're right, Scott. Is that saying goes, if it isn't broke, don't mend it? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's it's, what it's, I say. It's all right as it is, you know. You know and, 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 and I mean, all these idiots and, and all the rest of it going on about it. I mean, even if some of the royal family are not to your taste, that doesn't matter. The fact is that the Queen, who happens to to be a real goodie, yeah. uh, you know, is the holder of that office, and yeah. it is, it is, uh, you know, the most revered office in the whole world. Yeah. You she know, and we should be getting behind that and reminding Parliament that they are there by dint of Her yeah. Majesty. Yeah. As I say, she's all got that final veto if anything upsets anyone, aren't she? Yes, that's, yes. That's the main thing about it. You know, it. and I mean, governments come and go, prime ministers come and go, but monarchs go on yeah. from the cradle to the grave. And as I said, we've got all this history behind us and everything, and uh, if we did abolish it, I suppose, and, and tourism would, would suffer. Well, we'd just look like a bunch of prats if we'd get rid of that as well. I mean, you know, who is who are these hidden people trying to damage our country? That's right, yeah. You know? Yeah. Trying to damage the fabric of the nation. Yeah. Try to unpick the Bayou tapestry from 1066. That's right. We've got all this fantastic history, and I like all these other countries, and got as rich history as we have, and we should stay as we are anyway. You know, America wouldn't be there if it wasn't for Britain. That's right. There I would mean... be no America. There would be no President Bush, no, no United States. We set the whole thing up. That's right. If they hadn't had the Boston Tea Party, would have still been there, wouldn't we? Absolutely. I mean, Glasgow controlled the whole of the tobacco industry right across Virginia. That's right. We had all, we had everything, didn't we, Scotty? You know, I mean, Sheffield, Leeds, you know, the, 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 the capital of the wool industry, the capital of the steel industry, the workshop of the world. Yeah. And when you think, I mean, even from your country, Scotland, I mean, the Scottish people have emigrated all over the world, didn't they? And, Glasgow, uh, the second city of the empire. Edinburgh, you know, I mean, the, there were only two universities in England. There was five in Scotland. That's right. You know, and anywhere you went in Edinburgh, you met an academic. Yeah, and the Americans love the Scottish people anyway, don't they? Yeah, well, the Scottish people, the Yorkshire people, they're very much one and the same. They're, they're that kind of, they are the sons of the soil. That's right. The horny-handed sons of toil. Yeah, it's like me, I've got Scottish ancestry. It's only before me, grandfather come from Creef in Perthshire, you know. Yes. And I mean, you know, they've done wonders all over the world. Yes, and huge trade with Yorkshire, you know. Anyway, I'll talk about asylum seekers, Scotty. I mean, the Scottish People brought all these sheep down to flog at Leeds, you know. They did everything, didn't they? Yes. I think the, the, I, I call them the brains of Britain, you know, because when you think for a small population, the, the intelligent people that come from Scotland, you know. 
Yes, and from Yorkshire. Yeah. Let's not kid ourselves, That's you know. That's right. You know, the intellig- intelligence is the, b- the bone of the world, I think. You know, if you've got intelligence, you can do anything, can't you? Absolutely. And, I mean, it's very strange that, uh, you know, the seat of government, the seat of power is in the south in this country because it should really be in Leeds. That's you right. You know, or Sheffield or Hull or Glasgow or Edinburgh. That's yeah. where it belongs. Yeah. It's like, you know, I on about war. That's where, that's where all your geniuses are. I on about warmonger or anything like that, but if there's ever been a war, the the North has always won, hasn't it? Like North and South in America. Of course, yes. In Vietnam, the North won the South. Of course. You know what I mean? The North, yep. you know, so there must be something about that, mustn't there? Absolutely. But, Absolutely. Uh, anyway, Scott, about asylum seekers. Yes. Gonna, but, but, um, you know, I mean, I don't agree with them all coming here because, I mean, when they go through one country and they, they try and get to Britain and everything, and if they come here, why can't they get identity chipped or uh, have a, br- a bracelet well, on? Well, this is what we're saying, and the other thing is, the other thing, and this is so important, agnostic, you know, if they are coming here, why misbehave like escaping and things like that? That's right, yeah. You know, and I think that lot, once they're rounded up, should be sent straight back and say, I'm sorry, loves, but you abused the trust of the British people. That's right. You are way out of order. Yeah. That's not the way we do things yeah. in this country. Do you know what sent me on the news tonight, Scott, when I heard about that Muslim who killed his daughter, slit her throat because she was becoming so westernised? Did you hear about that? Yes, I did, yes. Isn't that upsetting, though? Yes. Because his daughter was going out with a Christian uh, chap from Lebanon and uh, he didn't like it. He slit her throat. I mean, how many of them are like sleepers and they could do things like that over here, couldn't they? No, oh, yes. They, they could say, well, if we can't have a, our Muslim way of life, we're going to let bombs off on buses and we're going to do this. That's what frightens me, Scotty. Well, no, I mean, I don't think that's actually the threat, to be honest. I think the threat has been overrun with people that we don't know who they are. Yeah. They could have got any of those people like that, couldn't they? You know. Uh, and I mean, uh, if they start thinking to themselves, oh, if we can't have our way of life what we want, we're going to do things... Yeah, but I mean, I'm sorry, but if you stay in this country, then it's the British way of life. Yeah, I always say when in Rome, there was a Roman Absolutely. Though. As I say, if we went to the Middle East, we wouldn't be drinking. If That's we went, right. uh, If we went to uh, the Far East, we wouldn't be drugging. Uh, you know, we wouldn't be stealing because we get our hands chopped off. Yeah. All that sort of thing. So, as you say... When in Rome, agnostic. Yeah, but I have been uh, racist or anything, but you know, Adolf Hitler, what he believed, he said, Europe for Europe, Africa for Africans, Asia for Asians. And, and he said, if anyone wants to come to our countries, do as they're told and, and imagine they're on holiday and, and respect the country. Respect the country, and that's what this lot have not done. They haven't respected the country. And I'll be quite honest with you, I mean, you know, it's, it, it's, it's all in the news, it's no great secret. But, uh, you know, what Hitler actually planned is what is coming to fruition, meaning that the First World War and the Second World War were completely unnecessary. That's All these right. people died in vain. Yeah, you know Oswald Mosley, don't you? Yes. Os- Oswald Mosley. Yes, his wife just died about a month ago. That's right, yeah. He was a, a great admirer of him, and he, he wanted Hitler and uh, Germany and all the countries to join together. Um, because he said he wanted no more wars, and he thought if we're all like joint, like uh, America well, and Europe, that was what Prince Albert wanted. You see, he wanted the crowned heads of Europe to be the, right. the, the, the the adhesive. Yeah, you know. He, wa- he wanted he wanted all the monarchs of Europe to get together, but of course, you know, his early death put paid to that, and then that, that the, the lead up to the First World War, you know, sort of like fifty years later. Yeah, well, that's what Oswald Mosley wanted, you know. And I mean, uh, they, they shouted him down and everything, but he said, um, you know, he wanted all the countries to join together so there'd be no more wars. Or, or well, I think they shouted him down because they thought his uh, his his vision was powerful and his views were a little bit extreme. That's right. And I think that, uh, that I mean, Churchill's views were pretty extreme, but you see, Churchill was, or uh, well, Mosley was an aristocrat too, but Churchill was an aristocrat. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Churchill, I think there was snobbery about Hitler. You know, I think that uh, Churchill felt that Hitler was a common little man and therefore had no right to be in charge of a country. That's it right. It should be somebody like himself who had proper breeding that was in charge. That was the way he saw it. And, of course, I don't go in for that one either. No, but when you, you know, think about it, I think if we hadn't, if we hadn't had Churchill, we might have avoided the Second World War. That's right. Yeah, you I know. mean, uh, the king and the chart. He, uh, he actually uh, 
went over there, didn't they? Well, there was a pretty big movement for appeasement at the time, you know, and Hitler admired the British people. Yeah, someone said he didn't even want to war with Britain, really. No, well, I don't think he did want to war with Britain, but I think Churchill sort of upped the ante a bit, raised yeah. the game, you know? Yeah, he said, you keep what you've got in the Commonwealth, and we'll keep what we've got, and, you know, and we'll be OK. But, um, like I say, all them poor men got killed, didn't they? They did, they did, it's and terrible. it's dreadful, and, I mean, it has an impact, and I think the politicians of today should realise that when you send in troops, the impact of the, 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 the deaths, you know, those that lose their lives, goes on for generations. It That's causes right. so much upset yeah. and so much misery to the families. That's right. I always think we should protect our own country. I mean, it's always sending troops abroad, but I mentioned this the other time when the other chap was on, that if there was no radios or televisions or anything hadn't been invented, we wouldn't know about what's going on in other countries, would we? No. You wouldn't know a thing. We just know what's going on in our own country and protect our own country. Do you know what I mean, Scotty? But I say thank God for the media because it's oh, very yeah, important it's to know there. what's going on in the world. But yeah, but I'm just saying if, they, what, if it wasn't there, we wouldn't know about Iraq. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't have a clue. We but have that's, a clue, but that's how they actually got all the people volunteering for the First World War. They said, go down to the post office and they'll give you a shilling and you get you sign up and you can join the army and get fed and everything. That's right. I mean, till then, no one knew, did they? No. Anyway, can I read you this point before I go, Scotty? Yes, go on, please. This has got a Scottish theme. It's for, it's for Doug, really, you know. He, brilliant, you know, brilliant. He's, he's a master poet, but I wrote this one, uh, listening to him the other night, and it, it's got a Scottish theme. It's to a Scot well-known Scottish song, but it's got a Scottish theme to it. Come. Will you know, come back again? Now we are gone, I don't know when. The years we had, some good, some sad. Will you know, come back again? Will you know, come back again, I was king amongst all men. To all worlds have you by my side. When you went, the tears I cried. Will you know, come back again? Will you know, come back again? So I'm not on my own, my sin. To share the things we did in life, we'd battle through all trouble and strife. If I was down, you'd make me smile. I wish you lived more than a while. Will you know, come back again? But if you don't, one day we'll meet, but who knows when? Well, that's gorgeous, Agnostic. Thank you very much, and lovely to talk to you. Yeah, nice to talk to hey, you. And don't leave it so long next time, because you're very valued on here. Yeah, I always listen to you, because you've got the best show on magic. Hey, and dinky-doo, love. Bye, dinky-doo, bye. See you now, ta -da now. That's uh, our Mr. Agnostic, of course, enjoying himself. 0845 245 10 to one's the telephone number. You're listening to Magic, which is the country's top radio station. This is the massive magic megaphone in the country's top phone-in programme. The one everyone's talking about, the one everyone is listening to spread the word if you're listening to this program right now make sure you tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 about scotty mcclue on magic we are right across yorkshire and the time is 20 minutes to midnight your phone in now on 0845 245 1021. That's the number to ring if you want to talk to me, Scotty McClue, 0845 245 1021. Fast becoming the best known telephone number in the country, out with the emergency services and the most important number. Always have it beside you, 0845 245 1021, so that you can contribute to the country's top phone in program anytime it suits you. Back I go to the telephones at speed. I'm talking to Doug. Hello, Doug. Oh, uh, Scotty. How are you doing, What sir? a guy. Are you all right? I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Agnostic for that poem. Oh, it's excellent, isn't it? It was really good, that, you know. Excellent, yes. You know why it was good? Go on, Doug. Because it was simple and it came from art. That's it. A and bit like your work, you know. That's what makes a poem, actually. It, it doesn't have to be... It uh, doesn't have to be fancy pants. It doesn't it, have to be fancy pants, it does it? no. How are you, my old chum? Are you all oh, right? Oh, I'm a bit tired tonight. I've you... been worrying and worrying and worrying and worrying. Why are you worrying and worrying and worrying? My little worrying? lad. Hey? You know what I'm on about, dog. I do. I do. I wish you wouldn't, though. Because worrying solves snout, you know. I know. He's 12 years old. I know that. But I do, though. Because mm. he's been so good with me. Yeah. Anyway, we're talking about... Uh, what were it? Uh, what, what do you mean, what were it? What we're on about now is... Uh, Everything. Uh, pardon? Everything. We're on about the loss. <laughs> <laughs> you you decide. It's your show, your call. Yeah, uh, well... The asylum seekers. Immigrants and that. Asylum seekers. Asylum this seekers. This lot that's escaped no, in well, Yorkshire. I'm to hear that tonight, because that, that just, it just showed them for what they are, doesn't it? Do you know, I, I mean, believe it's, me, it's I'm not like this. I have never, ever 
called them anything out like that. I mean, everybody's got their own story to tell. No, but I just think this is massive, massive disrespect for a country that they say they want to be part of, and it's then they just take us, them in. It's made a complete uh, fool. We all look like gibbering idiots. Can I just get a little story when I went to you London? Because they to don't see understand. You see, they don't understand genuine, caring British yep. hospitality. Right? They don't understand that. No foreigner can understand it till they've lived here for some time. Yeah. That it is given freely. It is It is generous. You know, and, uh, you know, to take the mince, I'm sorry, but they need to be rounded up and put straight back in a plane. <laughs> End off. You say it, boy, you, Scott. Well, no, it's the truth of it. They should... Well, that's they should, what life's they, about. They, you know, the, to, Tony, Blair, Tony Blair should get himself back from... Don't mention along, him, I, 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 Tony Blair, day, Tony Blair him. and David Blunkett should get themselves back from Bournemouth tonight. You had bring to in, them too, bring, you? bring in emergency legislation. Well, I'm mentioning them because they hold two of the most powerful positions in the well, country. Do you, know, do you know what I thought? You I, know, I said... It's too late, because Blair and Blunky have created a monster which they are incapable of getting rid of. Well, they've put up the puff of smoke, and you now they can't put out, the pu put out the fire. It's too late now. They've done it. You know. But I'll just give a little story. Before I start picking at anybody, I have to witness their side of the story. Do you honestly think that Margaret Thatcher would have allowed all this? I don't want to go on to that, because, I mean, that's gone. But well, let's talk about no, what's happening now in the future, not, you, not what's gone. No, but do you think she would, just uh, just out of interest? I don't know that, because it's gone. It's gone, right, that's gone. OK, let's get on with the future. Well, I'm on about it. You're quite I right, you're quite right. Listen, you speak, you're, you're preaching to the converted because, you know, nobody believes, like Scotty McClure, that the most important things are actually today and tomorrow. But, that's my philosophy, anyway. But you've also got to look at where we've come from. Yeah, but I was coming back from London, I've been to see my son and, and my daughter, and my son and his girlfriend, I, I stopped at their house. Yep. It wasn't their house, actually. They were paying £700 a month God. rent. In London? In London, right? Before they can get a deposit to put on to get a big house, like, type what, of thing. And what have they got for that? A couple of rooms? You're dead right, Scotty. Yeah. And that's all they have got. Dreadful. They had to squeeze me in a, in a, 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 a what the bed set tea type of thing. But what hurt me was hey, this, when I'm hey, coming back from hey, London. It's, it's not easy to squeeze you into anything. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you're squeezing me out, there's problems. <laughs> so, I'm sat there like, and on this uh, course, like, coming back from London, we stopped at Golders Green. Yeah. And believe it, there's so many ignorant people in this world that were sat, and bus were half empty. But instead of sat near at windows to allow somebody to get on or whatever, they would take it full seat up. They were putting a bag there or something daft like that so nobody else would sit with them like more little kids, you know what I mean? So. And this guy got on and he's looking and nobody had moved. So I naturally, I just said, come and sit with me, like. So he come and sat with me. We were only a young lad, about 17 or 18. And he were a, what they call it, an immigrant. And uh, he sat inside of me and I thought, well, I, I'll talk to him, you know what I mean? Best way I could. Of He's course. a Croatian. And I could get met word, I, I could get words out of him. Yeah. But believe me, you're dressed immaculate. He had oh. a pair of shoes on there worth more than my suit. Listen, look, I'm not doing these people down. I'm no, just saying, I'm just story saying, story don't first, take the uh, flaming mickey. You've got to listen to the story first. Go on. So I'm talking to him, I'm doing my best. I'm saying, I'm apologising for these being so ignorant, not letting him sat down, like. And I says, where are you from, like? And he says, Croatia. He says, uh, we have just got a flat in London. No to yard light, not paying for it. He it says, we have, I've been busy this morning fetching all the stuff, furniture, which we'll give them to them. Yeah. And wallpaper and paint. I said, well, what are you doing now then? He says, I'm going to visit my brothers in Halifax, because they won't say I'm carry on like. I says, well, what are you doing with paint and wallpaper? He says, oh, girlfriend is doing that. I says, aren't you going to help her? He says, no, that's her job. 17 or 18 year old, come on, Scotty. Gee. And this my lad there paying 700 pound a blinking month. Well, do you know what I think? Working five and six days a blinking week, you know 14 I, hours a day. Do you, do you know what I think I'll do then? And, and when I, think, when I heard that story, that changed my mind altogether. Do you know what I think I'll do? What? You know, I think I'll go to the Home Office in the morning and hand in my passport, right, and then leave the country and come back in, you know, as an asylum seeker. You've heard that story, and I do not lie. 
Che. And that changed my mind on the whole perspective of this. It really did. It's all gone a bit bananas, isn't it, when the pensioners' pensions have been nicked and all the rest of it, you know? Yeah, but, I mean, it, it made me bad because I thought my lad's working his guts out and his girlfriend is and they can't afford a blinking house and they're paying £700 a month. That's a lot of money out of their wages and they're trying their best to save up on a deposit and this guy's flaunting his centre back. He's 17 or 18 years old. He's never done a degree or nothing. Well, hang on and a minute. he's walking about to see his mates in Halifax. Well, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Do you have to come from abroad to seek asylum, or can you seek asylum in this country? I mean, could you and I seek asylum? <laughs> I think we ought to be in a bloody asylum, are they going on? I think we are. I think, that, I think the lunatics have taken over the asylum. But it's, no, but it's an interesting thought that I'm just wondering if a load of Yorkshire pensioners got themselves down to Dover and arrived, you know, and could take, you know, a, 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 a few weeks in the holding centre and then escape, right? So there's a lot of Yorkshire pensioners, like, running all over the place, and uh, they could actually seek asylum. Well, uh, why not? And then get a free flat and free furniture on well, the state. Yep, I'll ask you a question now. Look. And let their own place out. In fact, I'll tell you something. There was a story of a guy who came in here as an asylum seeker, right? He got given a flat. He then let that. He sublet that and moved on to another place. Uh, Scotty, uh, uh, I mean, it's gone from sublime to ridiculous now. Do you know? I mean, w what what main problem? What when Iraq were being treated like it while we 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 said I'm saying. Yeah. They come here because they said, well, we're not going to live in that country. And our hearts bled for them because nobody wants to live in a country like that, do they, Scotty? No. And it will run. But now he's got rid of You take a vote now on how many has gone back. Now it's free. That's 100%. I bet they ain't 10% gone back. No, you're probably right, actually. I bet they ain't 10% gone back. And they've every reason to go back now because it's free. Oh, absolutely. So what's you know that, that, that does? I'll tell you what, they'll have tax payers' money. That's easy. Well, I think everybody should say uh, and now. And he's got look, to that pinch now for well, me to say that tonight. I think I think we should actually now say to everybody from Iraq, look, we've freed your country. Get your send back now. Well, I mean, it's going back though. No, but I mean, if you, if, I mean, well, that's David Blunkett's job to ensure they get back. Oh, don't mention him. That's his job to ensure they get. He is the Home Secretary, right? Oh, it's his job to ensure I that they get I don't want to go on about him, honest. I don't no, but it. that's that's his job. That's all I'm saying. I mean, you know, I'm not making a comment about the I'm going to forget all about this now because I, I could write a book about it. Amazing. But you what should What I would do. like to say is that I was talking to a chap so, today. Somebody needs to write a book. I was talking to a guy today. He's an ex-con from old jail. Right. And he recited two poems to me out of this world. Brilliant. And I said to him, would he get him wrote out and... The two, the two good for me to read out, mm. and I said, if I sent them through, would you read them? They are fantastic poems. Go on. In fact, one of them, it were, uh, it won. These lads, if they're listening in old jail, the, it were called Three Wishes. Three Wishes. And it won first prize for best piece of poetry in old jail, like. Excellent. No names, no pack drill now. No, because I ain't got them. No. Nope. I've asked him to write them out. Go on. And uh, the second one. It's, I've never heard a poetry like this second one. Have you not got them there tonight? I yet? haven't got them, Scotty. Oh. But I'm asking your permission if I can send them to you and you would read them out. You can do, yes, or of course. Or you could look at them and make your mind up. No, of course you can. Of course because you can. believe me, there's something different. Of course you can. No problem at all. But I have a poem now, because I know you're very committed to it with this team tonight. It's very busy. Very busy, sir. And we're going to get them students on here, aren't we? They are. They're coming on. We want them on. We really want them on. We want to hear the youngsters. Well, this want time, to know what the whole country thinks. listen to this time, they might say, hey, oh, this guy's trying to help us. We'll have a go at Go on, him. Doug, go it's on. called Do Unto Others As You Have Done For Yourself. Absolutely. I really get upset when our youth are treated wrong. But this team, which runs the country, have been doing it too long. For the heart of any democracy is where our youth belong. And I warned you not long ago what was going on. I spoke of education, the main election theme, but for our youth, it's just turned out into a nightmare instead of a socialistic dream. Yet the people who legislate these vile student fees have had their education free through grants in the 60s. How dare they sit there turning blind eyes, 
no thought of youth's plight, only the 40% rise, one day, God knows, all this will fall back on them when the public and the students kick them out of number 10. For they really have no right to treat our students this way. The country needs to... Mo- they, the, the country's tomorrow depends on their today. Kids from poverty and lesser class gain in life such confidence from the exams that they pass. For M's sake, we're in the year 2003, and students' fees are just a travesty. So I beg all politicians to get rid of them and give more respect to our students, starting at number 10. God bless. God bless me. Superb. (laughs) Hey, thanks, Doug. There we are. Give us a call as soon as you possibly can, folks. There's a lot of you on the line and ringing. You're listening to Scotty McClue. If Les is still listening, Les, I did get your photo. I've meant to give you a mention um, because uh, we've just been so busy, but I got your wonderful, lovely, lovely photo of your good, handsome self sitting there, um, you know, and uh, by the little dog's grave. And thank you so much, Les. It is very, very, very much appreciated. Very much appreciated and lovely to see you there. You're, you're, you're a great guy. So there we are. Love to Les. He sent a, a wonderful photo in of himself sitting there um, at the grave of his beloved dog, his greyhound. And thank you so much, Les. It is so much appreciated. Dinky do to you and love and blessings to her. That's what I say. Now uh, we're talking to Bill. Bill's in Barnsley. Hello, Bill. You there, Bill, lad? I am, well, yep. Hey, well, stayed on. Well well held on, mate. Yep. Uh, now, then, uh, what I was saying there earlier on was, uh, uh, would an MP, yep. if it was in private industry, pay anyone as much as what they're getting with the expenses also? No, that's true, Bill. And also, I don't think we have agreed with me before regarding this sum. Uh, uh, the... General public, if they well, if, if MPs listen to the general public opinion, mm-hmm. then uh, and take it into Parliament, the uh, MP.